All right, and we're going to be working on the project that goes with the Working with Templates chapter in the Watts 4000 book. This is part of the Watts 4000 uh, writing applications with a temp framework course in the Watts certificate program. So in this templates project, um, we are going to be forking uh, the Watts 4000 templates and data from SU Web Dev. So let's get that going. <clears throat> Start with the fork here. And I'll fork it into my account. While that's going on, um, let's just have a look at what this, what this renders. So um, right off the bat, you can see that you have a, a description of a movie. This is coming from a movie database. And we've actually downloaded the first 20 top movies um, of the 20th century here. And you're just seeing one of them, and it's not even real data. This is just dummy data filled into this template. But you're going to be filling this out so that it shows 20 movies. Um, and so this is a mapping issue. You, you we're going to have some data, and we're going to be able to map it into a template. And we're going to see how that works using Vue.js. So let me start by cloning this. I've got it forked now. And we'll just get clone. And we'll open that up with Visual Studio Code. And because we're working on a view template here, let's see. Um, Let's take a look here. Watts, let's see, code Watts 4000. PWD code Watts 4000. And we will need to npm install to get the node modules to fulfill our dependencies. Okay, so if you recall from previous. Uh, work with node uh, with with Vue.js we've got a set of dependencies that we need to be able to build out our project so npm install and we'll let that get going and while that's going we can take a look at the data and the template that we're working with so it's all located under the source directory and you'll find the data under the assets directory and what you'll see is that you've got an object here so the npm install is done. We've got our node modules. Take a closer look at this data. If I roll up this results, you can see this is an array. And these are my 20 movies. There's an object for each one of them. These are the ones that we're going to render out to our template. And then there's a set of variables, page, that shows our current page, total results, total pages. So we're going to use that for some summary data. And I happen to have created a uh, drawing here that sort of sketches out how this data will map onto the template. So we've got this one entry of summary data showing the current page, total pages, total results. Then I've got for each movie a poster path, the original title, um, the ratings um, based on voting average, and we'll see the requirements on that. <clears throat> Overview, which is a description, a release date, and a list of, of genres. All right, so let's take a look at how we can start working with this code. We're going to find under components the results view. So here's our view file, and we've got a typical kind of view file that we've seen where we've got a template, script, and scope style sheet. So we won't worry about the style sheet right now, but we'll take a look at the script. What's happening here? As I said earlier, we have this static data. This API results, it's located in assets. And I need to import that into my view file so that I can use it. So we use this import, uh, this import syntax where we just provide a, a variable name for whatever we're importing. And here we are, we're, we're just importing this file. So we get this API results. Now API results, we're just turning around and returning that using our data function. And so the net result of that is that we make available all of the key value pairs in this API result. So our, 
our code now understands what a page is, what total results are, and what and what results are here. So one of the things I can do to, to visualize that is I can run my um, let's run my server. So npm run serve, and I've got the um, view dev tools installed. So I can go take a look at what data is actually available. So we haven't really applied any to our template. All of this is just hard-coded data. But if I go out here to view, I can see that we have this concept of a results tag. But really, the data that's available is listed here. And this is just totally pulled in from my, I've ex exported that from my data function. And it just kind of matches what I've seen in that static file. So I have the ability to pull any of this data into my template. So let's see how we're going to do that and what it will look like. So if we, we can close up this script, we're not going to do anything with that. But we're really going to be working in the templates. And we're going to be working with, with binding data to this template. And there's two ways we're going to bind. We're either going to bind content using the mustache. And, or we're going to be binding to attributes using a V bind. So let's see, in this case with current page, you can see it's hard coded to one. What I want to do is use the, the mustache to bind this content. And so we're in this span tag, and the content here is total pages, and the content here is total results. So again, we're taking the top 20. Let's take a look at this again. The top 20. And I always like to inspect, make sure I don't have any errors. And right now we're only showing one of them because we haven't actually bound the full set of results. But you can see that we're getting the first page and that there would be a total of 7,373 pages for a total count of 147,445. Well, we're not going to pull all that in. We're just pulling in page one, which is the top 20 out of those. So this looks good. No errors with that binding. It's good to check these things as you go. Um, the next thing we want to do is create a for loop here. And with this for loop, what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to use the v4 and we're going to set up an iterator that will go through our results. So we don't have to actually write a for loop. We don't have to count to 20. We have this results array, and we'll let that drive this. So in this, and so we don't set up the for loop on the UL. We set it up on the LI because we're going to want to repeat these list items, one for each um, item in the array. So we'll do the v4 directive. And we'll say result, result in results. Okay, and I'm getting a red line there. And if I look, it's saying, hey, I'd really like to see a key. And this is talked about back in the discussion here. Let's see. When we talk about looping, that it's a good idea to put a key into your loop because sometimes when you're, when you're using nested components and view needs to keep track of how to update each of the um, components in every array. These keys can help out with that. So what we're going to do here, let's close this out. We're going to set up the key. And the, the fact is, the database has provided an ID, which is a unique key for each of these movies. So we're going to use that. And we're going to set we're going to do this by changing this a little bit so that we pull result, which will be the object for each of the, the object that we pull out of each array. And then the ID will be the ID field. And then once we have that, we can just say key equals ID. And that clears out that problem that you saw, the syntax problem. Um, and it just allows Vue to keep track better of what's going on inside this loop. <clears throat> and um, it probably would work without doing this ID because we're not really nesting anything here. And we, you, it's, sometimes it's even tricky to see the, the bad effects that can come out of things like this. But 
it's nice to just get that in there and satisfy it. And if I didn't have an ID, I could use an index. So index is something that's provided for every v4 loop and it's basically just a counter and that usually will be enough to get me a unique value. But whatever I pull out, I'm going to want to use that name for the key. And this key is, this is just the shorthand by, for the v-bind. So remember the v-bind is like that, but you can shorthand it with just colon. And we use v-bind when we're setting objects, values um, on an attribute. So let's keep going. Um, so what, did, what is the effect of that though? Let's go take a look at our what we've rendered now. We've, we've created, we've set up this for loop. Looks like there might be a little problem. Oh, that was probably when I was changing. But by setting up that for loop, we've just actually rendered each one of the, each one of those, these list item template. And again, this is a pretty big template here. It's all the way from here down to here. We've, re we've rendered as many items as are in the array are now coming out as entries, these template entries. I'll, even though the data inside is all the same because we haven't p set up the bindings yet, we do get from our v4 loop, we get an entry for each of the items um, on our view. All right, so the next thing we want to do is to set up this source image. So this is our, our poster. And because this is a, an attribute, again, we need to use a V bind. We can't use mustaches. So we're gonna set that up. And then we, are, we can't use, well, we, no, we cannot use templates. We cannot use the expression templates we need, but we're gonna set a single quote in there we need everything to be inside of this double quote. So this is the syntax for the vbind. Let's close this up. And so we'll, we'll put a, let's see, we'll single quote that. And then we will add, oh, let's see, we'll single quote. We want to get this image is going to be unique for each one of these. So right now they all just have the same image, but we'll add result.poster path. Okay, so now we've, we should have a unique image for each of these. So yes, we've got the, we don't see the title here yet, but we do have a different image for each one of our entries because we have taken this um, URL and appended the unique ID for the poster path. And then we want the alt tag to be the actual title of the of the movie. So we need this to be result dot. We can either use original title. I think there's original title and let's see original title, Byte Club and title. So maybe they do change over time, but in general they're the same. So now we've got the the alt tag here should give us the the title. So you can see here we've got Fight Club in there as the as the alt tag. And then we're going to just leave that class. That's just a standard class. Um, now we've got the poster. The next thing we want to do is to output the title. So we get the actual title and we also want it to be linked. So what we need to do here is similar to what we did above. We oh, no, we can't use that. We use the single quote, and then we're going to add onto that result dot title or original title. I'm not sure of the difference. Um, is that what we want to do? Let's see, just to be sure. Ah, no, we're we're not putting the actual string title in there, we want the ID in there. So by putting result.id, that is because we're, we're making a link that will take us to the, the this movie on their website. But in here we can put the original title. And because it's content, we can use mustache. So I hope you're starting to see like when you use mustache versus when you use vbind original title. We might as well be consistent. So. 
So now we have, yes, we're getting our titles out, Blade Runner, Shawshank Redemption, Forrest Gump. And when we open up this link, it should take us, oh, looks like there's a problem there. Let's go back and take a look at it. So in this link, we want, oh, okay, we want to have the movie org plus result ID. Okay. Ah, we need to be bind href because it's an attribute. So we can't, yes, we can't just use a string in there. We need to v bind that. So let's take a look at what happens now. We're going to click on this and we're taken to the fight club on the movie DB. So yes, easy, easy mistake. Max, expect that will be a problem as you're working through this is to remember that you want a v bind, which means a colon or a v bind colon on any attributes and then mustache on any content. So next step, we're looking at ratings. Um, and you can see here that all of these now have three things. They're all Critics' Choice, Well-Liked, and Stinker. Well, we want to make those ratings match with the votes, like how well they were voted on. And so we have some instructions in this rating section on setting up. So we really want to show only one of these and hide the other two. And to do that, we're going to use the VF, the VIF. There is a V show, V hide, but that doesn't actually remove it from the DOM. And this is a case where we might as well just take it out of the DOM. We're not so V show, V hide would just maybe set a display option on it to to show it or not show it, but it would still be rendered in the DOM. This will the VIF will just take it right out. So let's take a look at how we set that up. So inside of this span tag. So this span, it gets, you know, um, it gets styled to look like that button. Uh, we say equals, and we're going to set up a Boolean expression. So result dot vote average. If it's greater than eight, then we're going to give it critics choice. And did anything make that? Ah, we still have, we, st we have a few goals, but now we're starting to lose some critics choice over here. And then well liked, we're going to set that up. We're going to use a VF result. Let's put that in quotes. Result dot vote vote average. Now we have to put the equal sign there. Um, and in this case, we want it to be greater than seven. And result dot vote average less than or equal to eight. So we're setting up a range where it includes eight, but is anything greater than seven or less than or equal to eight. And so to, this is a good thing to just keep in mind when you're creating ranges, you can do that pretty easily with the and, a couple of Boolean expressions and an and creates a range when you're doing a numerical test. Um, and then you just have to think about your boundaries because you don't want to leave out, like if I had left off this equals and I had everything greater than 8 and everything less than 8, I wouldn't pick up anything that was exactly 8. So there, you'll just pick that up. So now I'm probably losing a few of my green items. And then finally, the stinkers are when the boat is less than 7. So I'm going to put in a v if equals result dot boat average less than seven. Okay, so now they should really all just have one pick because we've set up those ranges. And we really don't have any stinkers in here because we've chosen the top 20. If we were paging through this, we could probably find some stinkers. But right now we're just seeing critics choice and well liked. Sometimes to test that out, I might go in and change one of these to a five. So let's see, I change that to a five. Um, now it's a stinker. So my, my logic is working, um, but I don't, I'm not going to see many of those in this view. All right. So we've got our, our we've got our, uh, our um, critics choice rating, our crit, um, we've got our ratings coming out. Okay. Now we just want to match the, um, 
we want to pull these numbers. So these are this is our, this would be the average vote, and this is the total votes made for that movie. And so to do that, we can because this is content, I can just use the mustache. And so vote average. Doesn't this beat writing a lot of query selectors in jQuery or in vanilla JavaScript? I mean, we, we're really just being able to bind directly into our HTML. So this is why a lot of people like working with frameworks. And then this one will be our total votes. So result dot total or vote count, I guess, vote count. And how does that look? OK, so that looks good. So you know, the vote counts aren't the same on all the movies, and you can see that we're getting uh, we're getting the, the averages coming out of the data. And it's a good idea to go back and check your data and make sure that those are matching what you see out on the page. Next step, the overview. And this is just right now, it's just Lauren Ipsum in there, and we're just going to take that out. And this is going to be where we're in content. So we can just go ahead and put our overview data in there. You don't have to do any binding other than the binding that you get from the mustache. And now we have our descriptions for every uh, movie. Now we're down to the original release. So this is a date. And we should be able to find this date in here. And we do have a release date. So we can actually use that release date. And uh, this can just use a mustache because it's um, content. And let's take a look at how that rendered. So oops, you don't see it coming out. Let's take a look here. Um, did I copy that right? Release date. Oh, I need to use the object result. Result release date. Yes, so now we're seeing a date. Um, there is a stretch goal, and we could take a look at how that would work right now. Right now, you look at this, and that's not normally how we see dates year, month, day. We have a way of looking at them that is, um, you know, according to our English language, how we like to view dates is by um, your month, 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 day, year. So let's look at how we can do that. There is a um, function called to locale string, which allows you to, um, well, here you're seeing it with some numbers. Um, there's actually a date to locale string. So when you have a date, you can actually uh, give it like an English. Oh, look, you could you can actually do quite a bit with it. But let's just say we want it to be in English. So what I want to do is use this English US. So this will look kind of like a US date. But in order to do that, I do have to turn my, my string into a date. So I'm going to create a date by calling new date, which is a constructor provided for you by JavaScript. And then at, once I have it as a date, I can call to locale string. So let's see, locale date string. I can do. I can call functions. I can do all sorts of stuff inside of Mustache, um, and en dash us. So let's see if that worked. We'll go over here. Yeah, it looks like it's not working. Let's see what's happening. Release date is not defined. Let's clear that and just refresh this. There is some sort of problem here. To locale string to a locale string. There it is. So now we get month, day, year, which is something we're more familiar with. So I think that's a threat, a stretch goal, but you can include that if you want. Not required, but it's nice to see that. 
And finally, we have this genre list. So right now, you just see a, a tab here, a button sort of thing with, with the word genre in it. And what we want to do is, well, let's take a look at the data. We actually have for genres, we have an array of, you know, like one or more genres. And we want to put out a button for each one so we can kind of tell by looking at it what, what genre it is, what, what categories it falls in. And the instructions here tell us that we can set up a v4 loop. So we're nested. We're, we're in a v4 loop that puts out a, a list item for each movie. And now within each movie, we'll do the same kind of listing with a v4 for each genre. So we are going to say, um, and we don't have an ID for the genre. So we'll just, we'll just make up a variable genre. So it's genre of genres. Uh, v4 genre, and we'll use index because we don't have a key in genre, in results dot genres genres. So remember, looking at the data that we have genres is a is a property of each result, and then for our key we can just say vbind key equals index and that will satisfy that now we can we're in here we can we can use our mustache because we and we pulled out genre so we are good with just using a mustache and that doesn't look like it works so let's take a look at what happened there yeah I'm not seeing those let's see what we're doing here so we created a V4 genre. You probably already saw my mistake. I got a typo. It should be result. So looking back now, now we're getting our genres. So drama, thriller. Looks like this one doesn't have one. Well, actually, it's a style issue. And I'll leave that as a stretch goal to, to adjust anything that might have a style issue. So there it looks like there's a couple of things where sometimes we get our genres with the poster and sometimes we get them without. And quite honestly, this would be nicely styled with a grid layout. So if you want to practice grid layout, this would be a good, a good template to try that out on. All right, so that looks like we've got all of our to-dos. Um, and so at this point, we should be able to build our project. So npm run build. And the build looks like it was successful. We've created our static files. Let's go look over here. You can see that they've dumped the CSS and JS into this assets folder. And then we've got our index. So we're ready to deploy our docs file now. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, git status. Git add. Git commit. And git push. All right, so that's ready to go. Now, I've installed, uh, yes, open in GitHub. I've installed this um, nifty little plugin here to VS Code, and I'm going to use that so with I can just hit an F1 and then say open in GitHub project, and it'll pop me right in there. And once I'm in there, now you can see when I forked, I picked up the SU Web Dev link. I'm going to get rid of that for now. And I'm going to go create a new link here using GH Pages. So let's go and see if we can get that going. So I want to ch choose the docs branch because that's where my build files are, my static files. And then I'm just going to wait here while this builds. And by the way, if you go and look in the book, so if you go to um, you know the Working with Templates direct of uh, chapter which you definitely want to read to read about looping and conditionals and binding uh, that all of this that I've covered in this walkthrough is available in this project templating output um, text 
So many ways to get through this. Um, let's go back here. We want to see if our GH pages is done, and it looks like it is. Let's open that, and we'll grab a link to that and post it in our GitHub. So now we have our two links. We've got our github.com link to code. We've got our link to, in this case I have a DNS name on it, but this is our GitHub IO uh, rendered code, and those are the two that you want to turn in for this project. All right, well I hope you enjoy this. It's a really good example of something we're going to do a lot more of, which is binding data. We'll be pulling data off the internet, but here we're pulling it from a file, and that can be really useful too if you have static data and you just want to share it. This is a, a good way to just import it and make it available to your templates. All right, have a good week.